Hey, this is Rob Werman from ERCast, and this is part two in our series on managing life-threatening bleeding in the field, in the emergency department. In part one, we talked about how to put on a tourniquet, the basics. This is how to pack a gunshot wound or a shrapnel wound, anything that's you know, gonna be hard to manage with a tourniquet. For example, a gunshot wound to the groin. These are very scary, can be very hard to control. You might stick your finger in there, but then what do you do? So we're gonna walk through the steps on getting combat gauze in there and effectively managing the bleeding, hopefully. Our guest is Dr. Mike Schertz. He is a veteran of Special Forces. He was a Special Forces medic. He is an emergency physician. He's an EMS director. And how this video works is he's gonna go through it the way he does this. Then we're gonna break it down step by step. And then after that, I'm gonna do it. And trust me, he makes it look so easy. It's actually not that complex. Takes a little bit of practice, but I'll tell you, man, he's obviously done it a lot of times. This is the first time I had done it and you know, kind of fumbling over it, but I wanna show you that so that you can learn some of the nuance of this as he's correcting my technique. So here we go, how to pack a gunshot wound. How you pack wounds is step one, you stick your finger in there and figure out where it's bleeding from, because if not, you don't really know if you're packing like some blind channel. And then step two is you take the end of the gauze, and this is uh, uh, training combat gauze, wrap it over your finger and then put the first wad there and then you kind of extend out what six eight inches and then you feed it to yourself so as soon as your finger comes out you push that in and then you feed out a similar length and push it in and then you feed and push it in so you're almost always in the wound and that keeps pressure on the wound a lot faster and then one of the things that's nice about this guy is once it's fully packed let me kind of jump this forward a little bit is once it's pretty packed and you're just about to the point you can't get any more gauze in there, you can start peeling these edges up to get under the edges, which is exactly what you do in an actual wound, right? Because right. then when you let go of it, the tissue kind of compresses back on itself. All right, let's break this down. So Mike's identified where the bleeding source is. He's put his finger in the wound, he's got his gauze ready, and then he wraps it around the tip of his finger. Here's how he does that. Training combat gauze wrap it over your finger, and then put the first wad there. Next, start feeding into the wound. One hand packs, one hand feeds. Kind of extend out, what, six, eight inches, and then you feed it to yourself. So as soon as your finger comes out, you push that in, a similar length, and push it in and then you feed and push it in. So you're almost always in the wound and that keeps pressure. Next step, the wound is all full and we're gonna pull the wound edges apart to just get that gauze underneath to create even more pressure. These edges up to get under the edges, which is exactly what you do in an actual wound, right? And then last, Mike didn't show this now, but we'll see it later in the video. He takes the rest of the gauze and pushes it on the top to keep direct pressure. And you gotta do that at least for two minutes for this combat gauze for the hemostatic agent to really take effect. Fully packed, I'm gonna take whatever gauze is left over, maybe another roll of curl -X, and I'm just gonna do two-handed pressure on it for two to three minutes. Now let's get into what it looks like for a newbie with this technique, and I'll fumble over it a little bit. Don't feel bad if you feel like you're all thumbs on this the first time you do it, because it's not totally intuitive. It's kind of intuitive, but definitely takes a little bit of practice. Here we go. All right, I, I have never packed a femoral artery or gunshot wound like that? Yeah. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, do it. Finger. All right, so step one, identify the point of bleeding. Okay. So Same. stick your finger in the hole because you may have blind channels, you may have little fascial planes, and it'll feel like a squirt gun on your finger even okay. while you're wearing gloves. Okay, so here we go. So it's okay. finger, bleeding is stopped. Okay. I've got my finger on, Correct. It, on, it, on it right now. I'm gonna have to take my finger out. You're gonna have to take your finger out. Okay. Then lay some gauze over the tip of your finger, a small wide, shove it directly back to the point of bleeding. And then feed yourself out, oh, probably about six, eight inches of gauze, okay. not too much. Okay. And then hand that length of gauze to yourself to shove it in. That was probably too much, okay. you see? So you probably want to take this amount and then hand it to this finger. And it's like a sewing machine. That finger pushes it right back in the hole. And the goal in wound packing is no matter how much gauze you get in the wound, if you really push harder, you'll get more gauze in there. And you just keep packing. At some point when the wound belly, the cavity is pretty full, uh, you can usually get more gauze in there if you start to spread the edges of the wound apart a little bit, deform the wound a little, get more gauze in there, and then as the 
Okay, it's tight. That's that's tight. Yeah. Okay. That's tight. So okay. we're gonna see if we can kind of expand the wound a little bit to get more under those edges. I realize as I'm doing this that when I've done this in the past, I've released pressure for at least a second or two at a time as yeah. I've as I've gone back because what it's what it's been is take this and I have I have not made a yep. made a missile with my finger Correct. in here. It's just been here, loose end, yep. shove in, come out, shove in like this, come out, not this where I'm feeding to myself. Correct. Coming out briefly. Oh, I like that technique. Yeah, exactly. And then the key, if you're using this kind of gauze, this is a training gauze of what's called combat gauze, which is a, uh, a kaolin impregnated gauze. Uh, it does require two to three minutes of direct pressure after the wound's fully packed, so the kaolin has a chance to encourage clotting. So it's all, so it's all in here. I've got my full pressure, my yep. full pressure on here, and then I'm just gonna. Keep, yeah. keep my pressure here or keep finger pressure on there. So once it's fully packed, once it's fully packed, I'm gonna take whatever gauze is left over, maybe another roll of curl X, and I'm just gonna do two-handed pressure on it for two to three minutes. But yeah, one of the keys is you really need to identify the point of bleeding because you can pack some of these little nooks and crannies, and if you never get to the point of bleeding, it's still gonna be bleeding. So that's where that first, as you, so you felt that you had the idea, and now my finger is... Directly to that point of bleeding. Directly to that point, Correct. and now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna feel that point, and, that's where, and so I'm gonna release, and I've kind of made like a little cup out of it. It's going, going in there, yep. and it'll naturally, Correct. Na naturally release on here, Correct. feed it to myself, Feed it to yourself. Yeah, I think of it from a standpoint, this hand packs, this hand loads. Okay. It's like a sewing machine, just goes in and out, in and out, in and out. And this size wound, um, packed aggressively, it takes you about 20, 30 seconds to pack it. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty quick. All right, thanks Mike. You're welcome.